Hello and welcome to Electric Moments. The UK's electric vehicle market is on a roll. There were twice as many electric cars and vans on our roads at the end of 2021 compared to 12 months earlier. And the business case for fleets has never been stronger. With attractive incentives, widespread charging infrastructure and strong demand, the most recent Lease Plan EV Readiness Index ranked the UK as one of Europe's best prepared countries for the electric revolution. For fleets, going electric can cut total operating costs by a quarter compared to petrol or diesel. And there's an ever wider choice of vehicles too. Good reasons to get ahead of the curve. Now, it's a big change, but our friends at Lease Plan are putting the resources in place to help make that transition feel less daunting. They've supported organisations of all sizes as they go electric, including working towards their own 2030 net zero fleet target. So they're familiar with the challenges and opportunities involved. This is the future, right? Yeah, it really is. Things are moving really, really quick and they've never moved faster than they, than they are at the moment in the automotive industry. And I would probably say that the next decade is radically going to reshape the way people and products move around um, with tightening limits for fuel economies, for CO2 emissions um, and, and other harmful emissions, NOx, etc., that comes out of the back of the, our cars. You know, it is already fueling innovation in the electric market. EVs are going to quickly become the mainstream. And this isn't going to slow down. It's no longer a question of, you know, how and why, it's why not. You know, the opportunities to electrify are becoming broader. Manufacturers are launching more and more products. The case for moving to EV is just becoming much, much easier. When we're thinking about encouraging change, it, you know, look no further than our Electric Moments campaign. You know, the series of videos that, that, that we're doing at the moment. And that's been a really powerful way of communicating these light bulb moments uh, so, so that drivers feel that they are able to make the switch and that they can see the benefits of electric vehicles. We've come out of the studio to Lease Plan headquarters here in Slough to look at real world driving experiences of EV drivers getting behind the wheel for the first time. For those new to EVs, it's always recommended to have a little training. For some, a thorough handover may be enough. It depends on time and budget. But just ensuring that as part of the handover, the basics are covered. So before handing the keys over for a new EV, make sure your drivers know how to drive it safely and efficiently. And it helps to lay the ground rules before any bad habits set in. Not only will EV familiarisation help improve driver safety, but it'll really enhance a driver's enjoyment of their electric vehicle, so they might go on to be an ambassador for our electric future. Today will be the first time that I'll be driving an EV. Uh, so today will be the first time I drive an EV. I haven't driven an automatic car before. Today will be my first time, so I'm really looking forward to that. So first things first, you need to understand EV performance. And by that, I mean power. So with power comes responsibility. You need to be clear how to control that power. The acceleration of the vehicle was amazing. It was instant, responsive. Um, didn't feel no pressure to it, I'd say. The car felt so light, like there was no weight to the vehicle, I would say. Um, the response rate of the acceleration was great as well. Didn't expect electric's gonna be this instant. It was phenomenal, the acceleration was phenomenal. It was instant, as soon as you put your foot down, car just kicked in, there was no, it was from zero to hero, basically. Let's talk about braking, specifically regenerative braking. Now, regen is a key feature which converts kinetic energy back into electrical energy to recharge the EV's batteries. So when you lift your foot from the accelerator pedal or lightly press the brake pedal, the electric motor acts as a generator and creates reverse torque to the wheels, slowing the car down, but also putting energy back into the battery. I have heard of region braking before, but I've never had a chance to experience it. It is different, but you can get used to it, I think, and it's, it just slows you down completely without using the brakes, basically.
Ultimately, electric vehicles reward smooth and anticipatory driving with longer range. Watch the road ahead. Don't be too aggressive with the throttle or brakes. It will also make you a safer driver. Electric vehicles are usually fitted with smart and connected features, which enable you to get more out of them and really unlock the advantages of an electric life. Electricity can be half the cost during off-peak times and less carbon intensive too. Most vehicles include an onboard data connection, linking them to a smartphone app. Nice to be sitting at your desk, check your phone and know you're up to 70%. It also helps you to be a considerate EV driver, so you know when to move your car when it's charged up and let someone else plug in. And you have confidence that you've got enough to get home. So no nasty surprises. In fact, not only does the UK have one of the most widespread charging networks, but drivers often find plugging in can be more convenient than topping up with fuel. There are 8,300 fuel forecourts in the UK, according to the Petrol Retailers Association, which compares to 19,000 charging locations listed on ZapMap. You're probably closer to a public charge point than you are to a fuel pump. And it could be even more convenient than that. An electric vehicle can be charged wherever there's a three pin plug and most charging takes place at home. There are plenty of places to top up, including your own garage and driveway. You can't do that with a petrol or diesel car. So charging guidance and journey planning. Always start with the end in mind. What is your destination and work back from there. A route planner and ZapMap will become your favorite new apps. Both can plan routes, which incorporate the shortest charging stop with the smallest detours. You may have heard terms like slow, fast, rapid, or even ultra rapid charging. Charging speeds vary enormously, so it's useful to watch out for the kilowatt outputs to get some idea of what it's capable of. For example, a typical home or workplace charger tops out at 7.4 kilowatts, which will add around 30 miles of range in an hour for a typical mid-sized electric car such as a Kia e-Niro or VW ID3. You'll find similar destination charge points at places where cars are stopped for several hours, such as shops, hotels, or tourist attractions. They're designed so that you add range while you eat, work, or sleep. And at the other end of the scale, the fastest charge points are strategically placed alongside the UK's motorways and A-roads, and they're designed for short stops while you grab a coffee and have a rest. Rapid chargers start at 50 kilowatts, and the latest offer up to 350 kilowatts, adding 100 miles of range in 20 to 30 minutes for most cars and vans. Now, some cars can add 100 miles in about 10 minutes, so you'll have plenty of range for another couple of hours at the wheel. And the facilities are improving too. GridServe are building impressive new charging forecourts with amenities for drivers. Besides the growth of the UK's now widespread charging network, one of the biggest changes in recent years is how easy it's become to access them. If you're concerned about compatibility and having to register for lots of different accounts, then you may be surprised by how simple things are nowadays. Most new electric cars and plug-in hybrids use the same connector for slower AC charging, which is what you'll use at home, work, or at destination charge points. It's called a Type 2, and you'll either find these units have a cable attached to them or a socket for you to bring your own. Think of it like plugging different devices into the same USB port. The Type 2 socket is also the basis of the combined charging system used for DC rapid charging. So the charge points you'll find at service stations and at charging forecourts. The cables are much thicker and always attached to the charge point, and they have two extra pins for high power charging. On the car, they'll be covered by a plastic cap. Almost all new electric cars use the same connector, so compatibility issues are rare. I'm a relative newbie at driving electric. The thing that I was really concerned about, it wasn't range, lots of people talk about range anxiety. I was actually really concerned about the logistics of charging and planning my journey and um, the impact of my day and the time I would spend out of my home or away from my family sitting on four courts charging my car. I manage a really vast, uh, 
sales team that cover a lot of miles and I don't know one of them that would transition back into an ICE vehicle. So you adapt, you change, but actually everyone's really embraced it. I definitely see a difference in the amount of time I spent filling my car and the cost of my car driving electric. And actually on reflection, I used to stop more often to put petrol in my car than I do having to put electricity in my car. So I was really worried about charging on the public network for the first time. But actually what I've learned is they're a really nice group of people. It's a community. You're a bunch of people in, in the same area or trying to do the same thing trying to get home or get to your destination so if there's anything you're worried about or you don't know how to do it there's always a friendly face or someone to help you and show you how to do it uh, and I've been really reassured by that so the best thing about going electric is the technology you get to adopt I've been astounded by how the technology has improved and how it makes my life and my journeys easier so what about membership well, accessing public charge points has also become a lot easier and there are a few ways to pay for it, even if you've never used that network before. Yes, most charging networks have a smartphone app, which means you can register your details and bank card and then keep track of your usage with an itemised bill. A few networks have monthly membership options which offer discounted charging too. All new rapid chargers have to include an option for contactless access using your credit or debit card, Apple Pay or Google Pay. And older units are being retrofitted too. To recap, there's no shortage of places you can plug in, even if you can't do it at home. There are twice as many public charging locations in the UK than fuel stations, and they're conveniently located where you'll stop, and they've never been easier to use. But better still, you don't have to rely on the public charging network. Wherever there is a plug socket, there is an opportunity to charge. Who says it has to be a chore? Switching to electric vehicles can help contribute towards a more sustainable fleet, but as they often have higher sticker prices than petrol or diesel equivalents, can they also cut costs? Well, the answer is yes, and in more areas than you might imagine. Where can a fleet save money uh, by going electric? Well, Robert, it's about looking deeper than just that sticker price of the vehicle. You know, in our industry, we like to look at the bigger picture. So for us, we like to consider the whole life cost of the vehicle. You might have heard of the term total cost of ownership, TCO. Yeah. We also like to think of total cost of usership. So that's the point where the vehicle's delivered to a customer to the point it's collected at the end. Um, and we see electric vehicles perform really well against their whole life costs. Um, so depending on variables such as um, the usage and where they're charging, often electric vehicles, when you compare them against their whole life costs, will perform better than a petrol or diesel equivalent. With the 2% company car tax rate fixed until April 2025, that gives us that longer term assurance. And that's compared to 25% for even the most efficient petrol and diesel model. Um, so that delivers savings for both drivers and of course for operators too. If we were to take the Polestar 2 for example, uh, a 40% taxpayer would be paying £335 per year in benefit and kind tax. And that's against a whopping 4511 for a BMW 320D. One of the joys of an electric powertrain is there's only a handful of moving parts. So there's no oil, no spark plugs, no filters. With the vehicle being maintained so easily, it means they're also off-road for much less time. Um, and we can see that maintenance costs can be saved by up to 10 to 15 percent when you switch to electric. But then what about fuel? I mean, is electricity still cheaper than petrol or diesel? Well, that's a crucial question, isn't it, when we're all facing the energy price hikes that we're all seeing. Uh, but the answer is yes. And if we were to use the AA latest pump prices, a 100 mile journey would cost around £17 for the diesel and £19 for the petrol. A similar EV would cost around £5 if it was charged at home on an average tariff. But even if a driver is on a um, high peak off gem price cap rate, uh, 100 miles is going to cost around £7 of electricity. That's still less than half the cost. Now is the time to start looking at your commercial vehicles. 
We're seeing manufacturers bringing more products to market at a faster pace, delivered by that demand from customers, seeing efficiencies of scale with production, delivering lower upfront costs and faster charging times. So everything I said earlier about cars is exactly the same for commercial vehicles. They can benefit from all of the cost savings, lower fuel, lower benefit and kind duty if it, drivers use their vehicles for private use. And we know our commercial vehicles are some of the hardest working vehicles on our fleet. So minimising downtime is really important to those customers. It's vital we keep them on the road as much as we possibly can. So we have a fleet of 25 vehicles. More than 50% of them are either fully electric or plug-in hybrid. They range from roles from electric tractors for grounds maintenance to wardens vehicles for off-road work. Um, that's mainly the plug-in hybrids and pool cars, which are fully electric. Just they need to be treated like normal cars. There's nothing really special about an electric car. It's just an ordinary car with a different power source. So we've deployed over 25 charging points, more than 50% are available to the public. We think it's important that we offer public charging because we want to encourage people to come to the park in green electric vehicles. And also it has the benefit that we can charge our vehicles throughout the park. How do fleets reimburse EV drivers for electricity used in the course of business? And on the flip side, how do EV drivers reimburse fleets for electricity used for private purposes? What are advisory fuel rates? So AFRs are the HMRC approved fuel reimbursement for company cars. So you use them whether you're a fleet manager and you're reimbursing a driver for uh, his business mileage or her business mileage, or you're a driver and you're repaying your employer for the fuel that you've used. So. For the purposes of reimbursement, hybrids are treated exactly the same as their petrol and diesel counterparts, but not so with electric. So for electric vehicles or battery electric vehicles, um, they have a flat rate of reimbursement of five pence a mile. The effective cost of any electricity will actually depend on numerous factors, such as the battery efficiency, the size of the battery, the driver's behavior, the method of charging, and, and, and so on and so on. What sort of things should businesses consider then when determining reimbursement rates for, for electric vehicles? So one of the first thing is the driver's charging situation, because not everybody can have a home charge point, right down to whether they have off-street parking or on-street parking. Um, and after all, on-street charging solutions vary tremendously as well, such as charge points built into lampposts. Well, they tend not to be as cheap as domestic energy tariffs. If the EV or the electric vehicle in question is being used solely for business use, then all of the energy, all of the charging can be reclaimed for expenses and there's no benefit in kind attributed to it. If you are uncertain whether you owe benefit in kind, national insurance contributions, there are some really useful tools online at .gov.uk and they'll help you to check. I've been driving electric for nearly four years now, talking about them with customers for nearly eight. And since the start of this year, I've actually now gone double electric, so both my cars are electric now. The initial step should really be to seek out help and support from those who've done this before and helped others do this before. Uh, I would then encourage a fleet manager to engage with stakeholders internally, whether that's finance or HR or tax or sustainability or unions, certainly engage with the drivers uh, to tease out their concerns, understand the daily journey patterns of these drivers to see who could move electric now based on the journeys that they do, who could charge at home, who may need to wait because they've got three years left on their contract. So you understand then who could move straight away, who may need to wait a bit, but this is about getting the right person in the right car at the right time, not necessarily about knee-jerking everybody into electric now, but it's also not about waiting until five, six, seven years' time to jump on the transition. The higher purchase price or lease rental on an electric car might put some people off, but when you start to look at some of the other component parts of whole life cost, specifically fuel, specifically maintenance, specifically the fact that EVs have no road, have, have no vehicle excise duty, uh, when you start to look at everything together, EVs start to look cheaper in whole life cost terms than petrol cars. And if you're not looking at whole life cost, you're potentially missing that opportunity to save both money and carbon. Where we come across finance directors who say, yes, I'd love to take my fleet electric, but they're too expensive, 
There's an education piece to be done there, and that is to help the fleet manager or the finance director understand the importance of whole life cost because we can identify real financial savings for them, real environmental savings for them by helping them unlock whole life cost. It really is the key to the savings, is looking at whole life cost. Until EVs cost the same to buy or lease as petrol vehicles, whole life cost is crucial in helping a fleet make the transition to electric. If you are trying to do something and you don't know how to do it, you'll typically ask someone who's done it before. And that's where support from lease plan would come in and help this. It's, it really is important to get the advice from people who've done it before. And then I'd say, break it down into bite-sized chunks. You don't have to do it all right now. I'd get, I'd get on the journey straight away. If, I mean, the best time to do it is yesterday. And if you haven't done it already, then the best, the best time is today. But that's to start the journey. And then I would take it in bite-sized chunks and ask for support along the way. The people out there that can support you will do a lot of this heavy lifting for you. It's key to have a partner like Lease Plan to take you through the process because they've done it so many times before. They have so many tools available to help fleets of any size. If you think that just because you've got one, two, five, ten cars, you, there's no support available for you, then think again because Lease Plan have an EV readiness tool which is really, really useful, free consultancy to take you through all of the areas you think you need to cover, a lot of the areas you didn't even know you needed to cover, but it can help you get on your journey. Yes, of course, if you've got much more cars, there is different kinds of consultancy available, but even for a fleet of one, there is support available from Leaseplan through the EV readiness tool. Customers want to transition, but they want to transition at the right time. So leasing companies can offer flexibility around transition programs, uh, about swapping vehicles out every two, three, four years, however customers want to take advantage of the emerging technology. Fundamentally, what I'm saying is that leasing gives you peace of mind, and that's what customers need right now. Lease plan is there to, to help advise, support, you know, implement these, these systems. Absolutely. So whether you as an operator want to go to insights.leaseplan.co.uk, where you'll find lots of useful tips and links, that's fine. Best thing to do, get in touch with your account manager or get in touch with our consultancy services team. Societal pressures on businesses have never been more fluid. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed the way we live, work and travel. And sustainability, both environmental and social, is a mainstream concern. Consumers and employees are paying even closer attention to the organisations they buy from and work for. And it's important to stay ahead of the curve. Fleet electrification is an important component of a more sustainable operation. If it isn't already, this process of future-proofing needs to get underway as sustainability will drive fundamental change within your organisation. So if you're looking to transition your fleet, Lease Plan have an EV readiness tool that makes that expertise available online and it only takes a couple of minutes to ensure your plans are on track. From a short questionnaire, they'll assess your operational requirements and progress on the EV journey, providing a free, personalised report with the information and guidance you need in manageable segments. And you might be further along than you think. As you may have gathered, it's different, but it's not that different. So what's holding you back? The team at Lease Plan are here to help you start your electric journey. So why not get in touch? This is the future, right? Yeah. It really is.